All right, so this video, I want to go over the, the data logging um, with the Cobra, uh, Cobra Ace Ace or Cobra 8, either way. Um, so first thing we want to do is go into the logging uh, from the castle link and make sure we've got the options we need checked. Um, I, I don't run um, the auxiliary wire mode because that's telling me what my third channel is doing. I don't check um, back voltage. I don't really worry about motor temperature. But the key things I do want is battery voltage, battery ripple, battery current, controller temperature. You can either go with or without that. Um, the controller input throttle. So that's your signal from the radio going into the ESC. And controller motor output is the ESC power. So this kind of tells you what your radio curve and your ESC curves are doing. Uh, I definitely want my motor RPM, my acceleration, which is G's, and my motor timing. So they're the key things I want to make sure I have. So these couple in here, I don't really worry about. Uh, the other trick to make sure we have is the power wires to the front. That should be default. That's why it has a little asterisk there. And that is, if we have a look. So EC mounted this way, the power wires are to the front of the, to, to the front of the chassis. So that will record the proper positive and negative Gs um, when we're running. Another key thing right down the bottom is the sample fre frequency. So by default, it's set to five. We want to set that at 20. So that's 20 samples per second. Um, so that's one of the key things we want to make sure we have. So once all that's set, obviously we hit update, send it to the ESC and captures it. Um, but here are the logs from my ESC that I was just running. Now we can do two, two ways of actually viewing it is we either select one session so this is from when you turn the ESC on to when you turn the ESC off or we can select multiple sessions so we'll start with multiple sessions I'll download the data log and this is what we'll this is what we'll see now the sessions are up here so here are my sessions so 133 134 and 135 the sessions and then what hertz they were recorded in so i can pull up my last three logs in in one go um, i generally like to just pull up one log let's say it's this one um, the reason for this is when i save this i can save just that information and i can record some notes about it as well um, so in terms of zooming, um, I'm using a mouse at the moment. So what we're, what I'm using is the scroll wheel. So back and forth on the scroll wheel will give me my zoom. Um, or if you're on a laptop, you'll see here the um, pinch method. So this is now on the laptop using pinch. So pinching in and out with my fingers. So that's how you zoom in from this kind of log. So if I zoom in to, to here, the other trick we can do is, so select on the screen, it'll bring up the indicator. We go to view, indicator options, move points before. So yep. So that's deleted all the d data before pretty much I hit the accelerator. Zoom in and then say this point here towards the end of the run, view indicator options, remove points after. So that's now 0.05 of a second before the start and then the, the finish. Now there's a lot of data on the screen here. Um, generally some of it's not really worth capturing. So the capacity, I don't really care. So I'm going to hit hide and you'll see that line disappear. Plus also it removes the view on the side. So if we see here capacities on the side, 
I can hide it, it gives me a bit more screen. Um, in terms of ripple, so I would look at the ripple, um, then hide it. It still captures here what the, the max is, so it still shows, and when and uh, as I move my mouse around, you can see the bottom point move around and then where it is. So it still captures the information here, just not showing it up. Um, same with acceleration. Yeah, it's kind of look at it. it you know, it gives me good numbers. Um, I know from a you know, around a 1.5 second run, you're going to need to be around the six Gs, and then obviously, the longer you can carry those Gs, the more power you're putting in. So, but I can hide that information as well. Um, power. So this is power as in watts or horsepower. Um, it's basically essentially the same as, as amps, but so I just hide that as well. And it leaves me with the key bits of data I normally want to look at. So my battery voltage, you see at the top here. Um, my minimum, 6.8, which is around here. So if I click the indicator, it'll tell me exactly what it is in terms of the indicator. Now this was maybe 1.5 second run so if I take off 0.05 off the run so you know I'm going to be around here for 1.5 seconds that's where the end of the 132 feet is and that gives me my motor RPM and exactly the information I need so that's just holding the trigger on a little bit longer than the, than the finish line. Um, my amps will give me a bit of a story around what's happening so this is the launch power I'm launching at what's that 62.4% um, and then holding it and then you can see here I'm pulling 471 amps but the amps is dropping down so it's hitting getting out of the prep but it's not like the motor's not drawing more from the ESC so there's potential to increase more power here. So where the curve is in this point is, is trying to raise that either by speeding up the ramp or changing the ramp, but the amps dropping means it's you're not demanding as much from the motor. So there's potential to grow or, or add more power here, but obviously that goes with wheel spin. So if I've got a really nice linear curve, like then there's no, that's no wheel spin. That's a nice smooth RPM curve. If the RPM raises and drops, that's showing um, raising is wheel spin, dropping is a grabbing. So, but that's a, that's a pretty good curve. Generally, when we start smashing in timing, which you see about this point here, I'm at 68 degrees of timing, my amps will start increasing and my volts will start start dropping as well so that's just the efficiencies of when you're adding in timing uh, how good your battery is all that kind of stuff so this is all really tuning to to what you've kind of got in terms of you know your setup um, but that's indicating probably starting to not be efficient with my timing there's probably potential to add more timing down the bottom uh, with more power but you know or go up in gearing so it's a uh, your timing is more in the higher rpm range but that's just really some tuning options so that's kind of looking at the data log and looking at the specific points of data so voltage uh, battery current um, then rpm throttle power and timing are the key things that i want to see on the screen now we can save this data. So normally I would take this and then I would write some notes in there. So this is maybe um, demo 1.5 uh, 94 mile an hour. Uh, if you want to capture anything, what gearing it was, uh, which was a 63, 17, so you can capture any, any details in the notes and normally whatever I do is I copy and I hit OK and then I'll save the log with some information up there and you see here the all my other logs that show the series of times. So when that's logged, when that's saved it'll actually show it up here 
some information about it. So that kind of gives me some understanding of what's in that log. Um, so if I want to open up a new log, load data, then I've kind of got my times that was in there. So I can look at these logs to see, you know, what happened on this one, what happened on that run. So um, the other thing we can do, um, change the pole count and gearing. So at the moment, this is um, electrical RPM. So being a four pole, it's sort of doubled. So I can half it by going into here and then setting it as a four pole. Four pole. So this will give me more of the sort of more actual RPM or the motor shaft RPM to what we would understand it. Um, I never touch gearing or anything like that because that's actually adding multipliers or giving me um, axle speeds and stuff like that. I don't touch any of that sort of stuff. I just, just play with the poles to give me my motor RPM. Um, then obviously we can set up different temperatures. So some people use Fahrenheit, some people use Celsius. Um, time setup, capacity, um, power, we can show horsepower. So that's now showing six and a half horsepower. And we don't want grass smoothing. So if we add grass smoothing, it looks nice, but you can see how much it's actually taking away from the actual um, true data, like how it averages everything out. So it looks okay, but it's definitely not giving me really good information. So I never run any grass smoothing. And then we can make the lines, you know, really thick. This is a bit of an Easter egg. We don't really need that, but it's something funny. Um, and then, yeah, we can play around and change the indicator colors to, to whatever you like. Um, I just stick with whatever's standard. Um, but yeah, that should be enough to really cover how we look at the data logs, how we set it up and, and how I read the data itself.